Hi. Not too much. How you doing? Good. Good to see you. Cool. Good to be seen and not viewed. Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, so we talked about doing that interview. Uh, you got time to do it now? Latte to go. Right now? Yeah, right now, right now. I got my crew right here. Hi. Hi. Yes, you do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me finish this up and then I'm totally down. Ooh. Hi, I'm JJ Barrows and I am a full-time artist and comedian, which means I'm a part-time barista. JJ. Mark. JJ Barrow. Mark Christopher Lawrence. That's me. <laughs> um, so, clean comedy. Why? Why? That's a really good question. So, I grew up on Jerry Lewis, Dean Martin, but then you're going more into like SNL mm. with like Gilda Radner and stuff. For me, back then, when people like Dean Martin was considered risque, mm -hmm. in this day and age, he would be considered super clean. But I think it required a lot more creativity to come up with something that made people laugh without right. having to lean on, say, a crass joke or yeah. throwing in the F-bomb or whatever. I think anybody can do that and get a laugh, but there's something to be said for just like connecting on a human level about mm -hmm. the human experience and addressing the awkward in it that you don't actually need to go for the shock and awe or the discomfort in order to get people to react to you. Okay. How long have you been doing comedy? A little over a year. I've seen you, you're very funny. So, Thank so you. in that year, how many times have you bombed? I, I mean, just like flat out, you know, every joke failed. Ever? I don't think so. I don't th I wouldn't say I've bombed in the way that I've seen, and I don't say that to say like, I haven't bombed. <laughs> I wouldn't say I've bombed in the way that I have seen some people bomb. I have had nights where I felt like, I didn't connect as much with the audience mm -hmm. as I wanted to, or maybe I didn't get the response. But I haven't bombed in a sense that like everything failed. And I think yeah. it's because I'm not necessarily like a one-liner joke teller, and mm -hmm. if the joke doesn't go over, it's like, uh, it's like I'm trying to connect with the audience. And so even if they don't necessarily like find something as funny as I thought they would, I, I sort of figure out how to connect with them in a way that's like, even if I don't do as well, they're like, aw, good try. Like, yeah. <laughs> Take me back to like your early days in, 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 in life. Were you always funny? I would like to think so. I'm a middle child, so I think that has a little bit of something to do with yeah, it. Yeah, middle child, Look the forgotten me. child. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Love me. Um, if I was funny, I don't think I necessarily meant to be, but mm -hmm. like I, in my family, especially as a middle child, well, my siblings were Bonnie, Bobby, and Betsy, and I was JJ. Mm. So like by default, you there was kind a of a joke there. Yeah, yeah. there was like, I feel like my life started as a joke. Um, and so I think I never really felt like I fit in or like I was good enough, which I dealt with later in therapy. But I think I learned to be funny. I was also kind of the ugly duckling in school. I wasn't really the pick of the litter, if you know what I mean. <laughs> So I developed this personality and I realized when people responded to humor, it was kind of mm -hmm. a way to like, you know, get people's attention. Is your comedy part of a ministry idea or like, like when, when I'm doing comedy, as I write, I just write to be funny. It's like yeah. I'm trying to be funny. Okay. But as I get older, you know, I find myself writing more for uh, an audience that's faith-based. But I still, I still don't call it ministry yet. Is, is that what you're... I don't necessarily call it ministry. I don't even necessarily know when I started doing comedy, even though it's comedy, I don't know if I was writing to be funny so much as just writing about the human experience and okay. the awkwardness of what it is to be human sometimes and interact with other humans and how there's like misses in communication and, and all of a sudden realizing there's like funny stuff in here and when people respond to that like, oh my gosh, me too. There's something beautiful about the human experience when you can relate to another human, especially mm -hmm. when you're different. And so even though for me, yeah, Yes, it's definitely more than just jokes. I'm writing with intention, but I'm not writing with the intention of trying to get something or get a certain reaction other than wanting someone to feel that it's okay to be human. What makes you laugh? My mom is so <laughs> funny. She's very punny. So I love puns. Mm. I love the cheesy, I don't do puns per se, like on stage or anything, right. but my mom has always made me laugh. I mean, like when we'd be leaving the house, she'd like, run to the fridge and grab a bottle of ketchup and she'd be like, bye guys, catch up with you later. It's like she just had to prove a point that she could make a pun. <laughs> what drives you? You have good questions. Well, that's why I'm the interviewer. <laughs> you are the interviewee. Um, you know, I'll be honest. Some days I don't know because some days I just am like, what's the point? 
Um, but ultimately, I would say my faith is huge to me because Why is that? so in the Bible there's this story about Jesus talking to the disciples mm -hmm. he did that a lot he did that a lot yeah right so there's just 12 dudes that like follow him everywhere and at one point Jesus is like dude things are gonna get gnarly they might get a little cray cray like you can totally leave you can bail you know at any point point." and this one guy Peter is like yeah that's true but like where else am I gonna go like who else would I what I go to at the end of the day like when I look at who Jesus is and what he was about and the way that he loved people and loves me no matter what I'm like who else would I follow like nobody offers what he has to offer and nobody is really about what he's about as far as love like like real love and peace not like peace man but like confronting head on mm -hmm. the tough stuff and digging deep and and trudging through the trenches and sticking through no matter what like that He's gnarly, and so it's like if someone's gonna love me through all my muck and mire, no matter what, I'm like, all right, dude, let's do this. How much of that do you put into your act? I don't necessarily say all that, like what I just said to you. Yeah. I, I I wouldn't say I I talk about it in that way or, mm -hmm. or verbatim by any means. Um, I talk about being raised in the church. I talk about being a pastor's kid, and I joke about being a pastor's kid. You know, like it just means I love therapy and all that stuff because there ah, is all this stuff ah, ah. about growing up in the church, like really affects you. And I think a lot of people can relate. Like some people end up turning away from the church because right. they were raised in it, you know. And so I address it in that sense. But I think it's in my act in the sense that I talk about the enjoyment of life or the pursuit of more or the not giving up and I think that's Jesus like I don't even think you have to say Jesus for people to experience him or know him or whatever even if at the end of the show they're like there was something different about that and I've, more often than not I've got that because you're going up on stage in a comedy club a lot of times it's dudes a lot of times it's super crass and I'm the one chick that's going up there and I'm clean Mm -hmm. More often than not, people have said, you are so refreshing. You I know? get that a lot, too. It's like clean is the new shocking. Because yeah. if you can be clean and be good, it's like, wow, that was so refreshing. Who's your favorite comic? I really love Mark Christopher Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mike Birbiglia. He's mm -hmm. a storyteller comic. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. love the way that he builds a story. He starts with the beginning of a story and then there's all these stories interjected. And then at the end of his set, it just circles right back around to the beginning. And you don't even realize you're being taken on one whole story yeah. until he gets to the end of it. And to me, it's brilliant. What's your favorite place to play? The Comedy Store in La Jolla. In La Jolla? Uh, yeah, so I've gotten to do that one a few times now. And it's, the few times that I've done it, it's been a big crowd. The energy's just been so high. And I think too, like who you perform with totally helps it. Yeah, totally helps it. Like I love performing with you and with Lisa and we've done these shows together where you kind of already have this like connection or interaction. Mm -hmm. They've been some of the funnest shows that I've done because I've enjoyed the actual like set and process of being the with The folks that people. you're hanging out yep. with. Yep. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna see this art. Oh yeah, I have some here in the shop. Is that yours on the wall? Mine's in actually a better spot. Oh, really? Yeah. Would you like to see it? Yeah, let's okay. go check that out. Let's do it. All right, let's make it happen. So my stuff's in here. Okay. I get like my own personal room. All right. Ta-da! I don't know why Mark was so surprised. The bathroom is a place of honor. Especially for an artist. That's not true, actually. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. I feel like it adds a lot of color to the room. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Girl. Oh, yeah, you gotta look up. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is beautiful. Oh, thank this you. This is uh, amazing stuff and texture. I like the. Yeah, lots of layers. I love layering like and mixed texturing. Media. Mm -hmm. Mixed media. Very yeah. Nice. So some of it's like live art pieces that I did performing while bands are playing music. I'm like dancing and painting and splattering, mixing. It's like my the canvas is like my instrument, almost like I'm a DJ. I'm just like painting <laughs> to the beat. Everything's layered, textures. There's like books in there, scriptures in some of them. Uh, yeah, like this one up here. This has a scripture like hidden all 
all up in it. Oh yeah. So you can actually like go up there and like read some of it, or regardless of whether or not people see it, it doesn't mean the truth isn't still there. I could talk about my artwork all day, but what I can't wait to see is how hilariously bad I think Mark is going to be at trying to make a latte. So let's go do that. Okay, so this is where the magic happens. This is it. You know, show me how to be like the king barista. Yeah. You know everyone thinks that making coffee is easy, but there's actually a lot more to it. Luckily for Mark, he has the best teacher in California, me. I was talking about me. Is that clear? All right, ready? Yep. So first we get the espresso. Get the espresso. It's timed. Oh, it just does it on its own? All you gotta do is go, yep, boop. Oh, see? It's 2000. Back in the old days, <laughs> we had to grind each bean. Yep. Give it a little twist. Pressure. Boom. No, that knows exactly how much to put in there. Yep. It's gonna be timed, so then while that's pulling, we can steam our milk. So you're gonna to wanna to completely submerge the wand. Doesn't that little pot get hot? It does. Your hand is basically is a thermometer. Oh, see, I have hands like a fridge. So you're holding it till it's a little bit too hot to touch. Okay. Okay, that's a little hot. Get that there. And give it a wipe. Give it a wipe, give it a little And what was swirl. that, what was that little? Kind of get the bubbles out, so I like dump a little bit off the top just to get it smooth. You want it to kind of almost look like liquid. I was gonna say liquid paint, but that's redundant. Look like paint. <laughs> <laughs> liquid paint. As opposed to solid paint. <laughs> As opposed to. All right. So you're gonna give it a pour, and then you're kind of gonna stir it as you're pouring. Mix so it the up. pour is making the stir. Yeah, and then you're kind of pushing the milk. Mm-hmm. This isn't my best job. Again, the nerves. And then you pull it all the Whoa. way through. Whoa! Whoa! My coffee art was actually not that good. Mark is either an incredible actor or he's easily impressed. It's sorcery! <laughs> wow! Because it started off like this blob of stuff and then all of a sudden you've got art there. You Boom. see, a true artist we are here with J.J. Barrows. You want to try? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be so good at this, I can't wait. If I had to predict how Mark will do, I would say, can coffee explode? Okay, so first thing I do is I take this thing here. A thing, better known as an espresso pod. And I put it in the espresso grinder. An espresso grinder, better known as a, actually no, he got that right. And then I yank that out of there and I take the twister. I actually have no idea what that one's called. Wait, is it actually called a twister? Put the twister on there. Yeah, just give it a little turn. Give it a little turn. That's good. And that's good. And then I take the... It's called a tamper. He has no clue. Tamper and tamp it. Tamp it. Mark is actually better at this than I was when I first started. So, I mean, that's great. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm gonna stir it with the milk. Good, just give it a good stir. Like that? It's actually really good. Moss? Go up high and pour down and push as you pour. A little more on the push. A little. And, mm. and stop. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> I feel better now. Oh, there's a little blob. Yeah, that's. Uh, Abstract. I was going for lightning, is what I was going for. So yeah. I, I didn't want to do a leaf because everybody does a leaf. It's there. That's Anybody boring. can do a leaf. Anybody. So I was just going for you know lightning or. Stick. And there's a tiny little heart in there if you look close. It's like the Grinch's See, heart. It's love. Before it grew. It's love. It's a latte okay, love. Okay, who who wants a celebrity latte? I just made that one myself. You so. tell. <laughs> you see that lightning in there? There's a lot of stuff going on in here. Uh, yeah, that's the way we do it. Leaf. <laughs> Two hours later, that customer got coffee poisoning and died. I'm just kidding. I don't even know if coffee poisoning is a real thing. But actually, he did get violently ill. And Mark isn't allowed to make coffee in California anymore. But time for some stand-up. Welcome back to Pure Comedy, brought to you by PureFlix.com. Please welcome my good friend, J.J. Barrels. That's all. I'd love to start with you sharing a little bit about me since we don't really know each other. Um, I've kind of always been the kid in life who felt a little left out. I don't know if anyone can relate. Mine starts with my family of origin. So 
Yeah, um, let's see. There are my siblings, Bonnie, Bobby, and Betsy. My dad, Bob, his family, Bonnie, Bob, Betty, Ruth, Buddy, and Bill. My grandma, Billy, our other grandparents, Ben and Betty, our dogs, Buddy and Biscuit. Together we... <laughs> True story. Together we are the Barrows, and I am JJ. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm a middle child. It's not like they ran out of B names, you know, and they're like, uh-oh. <laughs> Give her two J's. Um, I'm also a preacher's kid, which is to say I love therapy. Um, and I'm from South Carolina, which is to say, bless my heart. Um, for those of you who don't know, if anyone from the South ever says to you, bless your heart, they are not being nice to you. <laughs> no. Um, when people from my hometown actually first heard that I'd moved to California and I was getting involved in things like yoga, they were like, oh my lord, <laughs> she done gone to the dark side, bless, bless her heart, we ought to put her on a prayer train. <laughs> and that is the last place you want to be is on a southern woman's prayer chain. Because all that means is I will tell everybody your business. <laughs> In Jesus' name. <laughs> I love the South, though. I love to go back and visit. I went back recently, and my um, family was there. My little cousin was there, and she crawled up in my lap. She started touching my face. She started playing with my hair. She says, you look like Cinderella. I was like, oh my gosh, Lauren, thank you. And then she leaned back and goes, before the ball. It's <laughs> like, that's actually kind of clever, <laughs> but get off of me. <laughs> um, I get it though, I kinda, I've always been more of the tomboy type. I had dated this guy one time and he had said to me, you know, you should consider yourself lucky because I usually only date pageant girls and you are not one. Yeah. I know, he would say stuff to me all the time, like, I can't believe I like you, but I do. <laughs> yeah, so I shot him. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, you can do that in South Carolina, but I didn't. <laughs> I figured we should at least break up, though, because I didn't really feel good about myself. Um, ladies, that's your first clue. But I wanted to be nice about it, and so we went out to dinner, and we go to this whole long dinner, and I go in this long spiel, and I'm like, look, you know, as a boyfriend, you really deserve to be a priority, but I can't really make you a priority right now. And he stops me, and he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you breaking up with me? And I was like, yes. And he says, you're breaking up with me. <laughs> I was like, yes. At which point the waitress walked up to check in on us and she's like, hey y'all, how y'all doing? How's everything going over here? I was like, oh, it's fine, we're good. Thank you, thank you so much. And he goes, actually, she just broke up with me to the waitress. And without w missing a beat, the waitress looked at both of us and she goes, oh, I'm sorry, did you want me to split the check? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, split it. <laughs> um, what else? I'm also in my 30s. I don't know if anyone can relate to me. Yeah, 30s. I love it. Sort of. It's kind of an uphill battle. Um, to me, the 30s are a very awkward age. It's like the adult puberty because you're not really that old, but you're not really that young either. Like when I came to California, I started working with high school students and one of the girls in the group told us about a guy that worked with them before and she said, but he never really knew what he was talking about because he was like middle aged. And I was like, oh, well, what's middle-aged? And she was like, I don't know, like 30? <laughs> yeah. I was 30 when she said this. I was like, well, that explains my back problems. <laughs> I didn't know I was middle-aged. Also, I only shaved in my knees sometimes. <laughs> I'm tired. Like, that's just how it goes. You lose energy. The weirdest thing, though, for me about being in my 30s was the day that I realized that 40 year old men were no longer creepy, <laughs> but attractive. Like, I don't really know when that transition takes place, but it does, and it's very weird. When I was in my 20s, if someone had said to me, that 40 year old dude's really into you, I'd be like, ugh. 
But now, not that it happens, but if it did and someone were to say to me, that 40-year-old dude's really into you, I'd be like, go on. <laughs> yeah. The other weird thing is finding a guy super attractive and finding out he's super young. I'm like, oh, he's cute. And someone's like, yeah, he's 22. I'm like, oh, gosh, I am so sorry. <laughs> it's possible I used to babysit him. I don't know. Because <laughs> that's just weird. So dating in your 30s is this weird middle game. And I finally just resorted to what all the Southern women say. This is what you learn in the South, honey. You got to pray for a husband. Pray for a husband, honey. That's what they all say. So I did. God was like, girl, you got to shave above the knee if you want help with that. <laughs> That's my time. Thank you guys so much. JJ Barrows, ladies and gentlemen. Check her out on social media.